Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we've got a new Cervelo inner tube sensors, Bell Tech, new carbon wheels, and a spicy helmet. Plus, our main talking point tech that we know is faster, we just cannot face using. Right, first up, let's take a look at last week's poll where we asked you which wheel depth would you go for? 35, 45, 60 or 80? Overwhelming uh, victory here for 45 millimetres. Those are 55% of the vote. I think, can we call that the wheel depth of the people now? <laughs> yeah, it's in there with 105, isn't it? Yeah, uh, wheel depth of the people, 45 mil, great all round wheel. Well. Only 2% of people wanted 80 mils. I think everyone loves deep wheels, it's just it, when it comes to crunch, most people don't buy them because they're a bit more specialist, but everyone loves them. Anyway, on to our main talking point, tech that we know is faster, but we just can't face use in. I mean, we love tech, we love innovation, and sometimes uh, a new invention comes along yep. that is measurably faster, it will make you faster, but perhaps it compromises performance or ergonomics in other areas, or maybe, it's just not cool. Yeah, and a perfect example of this are the super narrow handlebars that we're starting to see on some road bikes. Well, friend of the channel, engineer, aero expert and pro cyclist Dan Bigham was spotted using these bars, which he's designed and made in the Danish National Series, just 27 centimetres wide. What do you think? Um, has he tested them on the cool scale? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Um, they are super narrow, aren't they? And it does all raise a question about the handling implications that these have, although they are flared bars, so presumably wider on the drops mm. to add a bit of added stability. Yeah, considerably so. Um, I mean, one thing to point out is that, you know, I guarantee that, that, that Dan has thoroughly aero tested these and yeah. seen a significant benefit, um, and that's why you know, he'll be, he'll be using them. Yeah. And he won't have left it to chance. Yeah, it kind of looks a little bit like Mario Kart though, doesn't it? Sort of sat, just with those super narrow handlebars. Yeah, like Donkey Kong. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that is exactly little, yeah. little go-kart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. But, I mean, it's not really down to what we think. I, well, it is down to what we think, but let's, um, let's In the interest of fairness. Yes. We want to hear other people's opinions it's on this. It's time for a GCN Tech kangaroo court. Now, in making the case um, against. against super narrow handlebars, we've got GCN's special cycling style and fashion correspondent, Adam Blythe, uh, and he's allowed 20 seconds. 20 seconds only, not a single second more. To make his case against super narrow handlebars. Go, Adam. Narrow handlebars, it's not the issue. It's the levers tilted in. I think the levers tilted in, it's great. If you can sit in that position all day, but ultimately, so about 20% of the race you might sit like that, if that. Uh, if you're in a solo breakaway, brilliant. But if not, I don't think it's great, especially for climbing, for pulling on the hoods. Thanks, Adam. Of course, we are all about balance here at GCN. Yes, yeah, so on to Dan Bigham to make the case uh, for narrow bars. He's actually with the Danish National Pursuit Squad at the moment, uh, helping them prepare for, for Tokyo. But Dan, you too have 20 seconds to make the case for narrow bars. Go. Narrow handlebars, speed wins races, style doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the first person over the line is the winner. So for me, what's the CDA is what matters. I'm going for breakaways. I need to either put more power in or get more aero or do both. This does exactly that. The handling is the same. You familiarize yourself. Uh, anybody wants to try it, do it. You'll never go back. Well, well so there you have it. Um, it doesn't end there though, does it? It's not just super narrow handlebars. What about sock length or those aero calf guards you see that are all the way up almost to your knees? They're sort of a bit like old school socks. Yeah. Well, I agree. I mean, while I think the, the UCI's sock measurement device is utterly ridiculous, it's like they found an old windscreen wiper off an Austin Montego and thought, that'll do. Um, I am actually all for some kind of sock height rule. Are you surprised me really with that? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, well, when I did the hour record, you, I actually You did got an hour record? Funny. So when I did, the, when I did an hour record, um, and we got all the custom aero kit from No Pins, you know, the special suit, and uh, they, they offered me shoe covers that went right up to just below my knee. And I said, no. no Wouldn't I, stand for it. I want, you, you've got to make me some shorter ones that are like midpoint on the calf. Because yeah. I can't bear the thought of the enduring image of me doing this 
forever, for all time, being wearing those really high knee socks. So um, that's where you draw the line for, for socks. I just couldn't thought that I couldn't think of the my grandkids seeing that image of me where I couldn't live with that. Couldn't I'm with, with you on the sock front to be honest. I draw the line just below the calf muscle, or at least where my calf muscle used to be. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so what about what about you then? Where's what, what other limits do you have? Um I'd never wrap my helmet in cling film. Yeah. No, I know it might be faster, and I've seen some people do it, um, but for me, big no no. I've got another one though. Um, skin suits, okay? Yeah. yeah, in a race, definitely. But for like a Sunday casual ride, yeah. under no circumstances should you ever be wearing... And also, you know, the people, in my case, the people of Bath, they don't need to see that. They are not on a Sunday morning. No. They want peace and serenity. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you on the skin suit, but I have been known in the past to go out, do some training in skin suits, especially um, in some situations, trying to get a few cheeky King of the Mountains Bit of added added aero gains in there. Um, Any KOM I've ever taken in my life was wearing a rain cape that was like flapping. Oh yeah, I've got that unzipped almost yeah, the way. Was it? Yeah. Well. Um, what about other items though? Think about time trial helmets or visors on helmets. No, what, what absolutely not. No. Uh, like most, I think most time trial tech only acceptable in a race. Yeah, time, time trial stuff is very except the, like notable exception. Yeah. You can wear, you can like put a skin suit on maybe and a, a time trial helmet and stuff and a disc wheel. If you're just checking your equipment the day before a race Ooh. and you just want to go out for a little run, just a little one, that's okay, I think, in my mind. Pretending, you're like, oh, I've got a time trial tomorrow. And if, yeah, if you, happen, <laughs> if you happen to go take a wind assisted KOM while you're testing your equipment, so be it. That's just a coincidence, but yeah. yeah. Time trial equipment is one of the most divisive subjects of that, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, I kind of agree, but I think these are semantics because in the grand scheme of things, like 99% of the population, if you're out just wearing any kind of light crop, are going to think you're completely bonkers and look like a complete b****. <laughs> um, you're certainly not going to win any fashion shows, are you? Yeah, I, I think you've got a point. Yeah, it's like, where do you guys draw the line with style over speed? Would you wear anything if you knew it was faster? Mm. I think, well, let's have a poll as well on this. Let us know what you think in the comments, but we'll have a poll. Um, would you use uh, an aero helmet with a visor, a skin suit, long knee socks and 27 centimetre handlebars if it meant you'd win the race? Or would you rather come second but look traditionally cool to your cycling peers? And keep your own self-worth. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it would be a good one. Yeah. Head over to the GCN app and let us know on this one. Now reveal the results next week. It's now time for hot and spicy tech. And first up this week, Ollie has had his tech binoculars out and spotted potentially a new Cervelo R5. Yes, at Flesh Vallon uh, last week, uh, Primoz Roglic was seen aboard this, which does appear to be a new Cervelo R5. And so then we did a bit of digging on the uh, UCI approved frame list and sort of that indeed, there is a new Cervelo R5 listed there. It's um, been approved by the UCI, hasn't yes. it? Yes, so he's not breaking any rules. And it had a kind of like camo, sort of weird paint job that we see on it. It was like black with like yellow cracked bits on it yeah. to try and break up the shape a little bit. Disguise people. They always do this. That's what they do with new cars, isn't it? Yeah, they put they weird, weird like shapes a wrap or yeah. something on it. But, but often, it's, it, what frustrates me is those kind of camo -y paint jobs. They end up looking better than when the actual normal one comes out. <laughs> better than the plain yellow yeah, bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but sort of interesting features we can just see on the bike are, it actually looks quite similar to the old one, um, but there's integrated cables at the front end now to make a it a bit more aero. Yeah. Yeah. Disc brakes. And something else I noticed was that it had standard through axles in there. And the old R5, that came with the RAT through axle system. Um, which was a little bit of a, a fiddle, um, and, and it kind of was trying to combine the idea of a quick release with a through axle. But yeah, that's that seems to have gone. Um, Hopefully, that'll be an improvement. So. Yeah, yeah, I would say. Up next, we've got the most high-tech inner tubes you could possibly think of. Tech is evolving everywhere, Ollie. Nothing mm. is safe. Everything's going to be updated, improved, all the way down to the humble inner tube. That's not even safe. Yeah. So a company called Tubalito, who are known for their super lightweight inner tubes made from polyurethane, have actually improved their uh, mountain bike inner tubes with 
a, a chip technology. So they've got an NFC chip inside the inner tube. So that's the kind of chip that you get inside a, a credit card, like contactless. Yeah, it's that, same, it's that same technology. So it doesn't have any batteries or anything like that. Very, very small. It's inside the inner tube. And you can scan it with your smartphone and it'll give you a tyre pressure reading. That's, that's mental. It is quite insane, isn't it? And the only downside I can see, or not downside, but it's a sort of item of your bike that's a little bit vulnerable, isn't a it? A sacrificial part. Yeah, like you could just puncture it the day after you bought it. Mm. Um, at the moment, this technology is only available at mountain bike inner tubes, but presumably they could quite easily transfer it onto the road if they wanted to. Mm. Watch this space, I guess. What have we got next? Well, we've got this neat little device from a company called Hide My Bell. You know what this is? No. Okay, so I was out riding at the weekend, and for the first time, maybe ever, I thought, I wish I had a bell on my bike. Were you on a bike path? I was on a canal path, actually. Yeah. And it got very tiresome saying, good morning, excuse me, hello, yeah. how you doing? And just those people that are walking along in the same direction as you with headphones on. Oh, I, I had They're to start. the worst people in the middle of the yeah, path. Yeah, I started <sighs> shouting at one point. Yeah. Yeah, so I just wished I had a bell, but yeah. me being me, I just couldn't get a normal bell on your handlebars. So I found this, which incorporates a bell into a, um, like GPS head unit out the front mount. And this is pretty cool it because neat, doesn't it? it is neat. It's made out of carbon fiber, fits your standard sort of bar diameter, so 31.8 millimeters. And it's super lightweight, 38 grams this is, or if you want to remove the bell because it's removable, it's, um, it saves a further 11 grams. So incredibly lightweight. Um, it just incorporates most head units, so that quarter turn design that mm. most, most use. And if you don't use a quarter turn head unit, there's different adapters available. So you can even add things like a, a GoPro onto it, for example. The most famous uh, bell user that I can think of, and someone who absolutely swears by them, Emma Pooley. Yeah? She loves bells, yeah. And, but for good reason. So whenever she's doing like a Grand Fondo or something, she has a bell on her bike because she just overtakes so many people continuously on mountains because yeah. she's just amazing at going uphill. She's constantly like ringing a bell, just like, get out of my way, excuse yeah. me, I'm coming past. <laughs> I gotta say, yeah, it, it was the first time of the weekend that I genuinely was like, you know, I wish I had a bell on my bike. And I suppose, well, lots of people do and that's why. Yeah. Next up, some new uh, specialized Roval C38 wheels. And the aim behind these is to make a more, well, for Roval to make a more affordable wheel set that's carbon fiber and disc brake and tubeless, but still retains the quality um, and some, you know, a lot of the performance of their far more expensive top end wheels. Yeah, so these are still retaining that DT Swiss um, hub, the spokes and those brass Prolot nipples that are familiar with their more expensive range. So it's just keeping that sort of core of the quality of the wheel there, isn't it? That's mm. what they're all about. They've yeah. got some key stats as well. So they're um, disc brake only, tubeless ready as well, and um, slightly wider. So they're 21 millimeter internal rim width, which is sort of what we see among lots of popular brands at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of DT Swiss hubs. These have got a, a new 370 hub, 18 uh, tooth ratchet engagement. So it should, should engage quite nicely and you know, shouldn't, um, well, you, you just, yeah. You, quick uh, response on, isn't yeah, it? Quick yeah, quick response when you turn on the free hub. Um, but they, uh, they're also sub 1600 grams. Yeah, I think pretty much on the dot nearly, yeah. yeah. So the, pretty good. Yeah, the price in pounds is 1150. Uh, so you'd imagine it'll be similar, but slightly less in pounds, in euros and dollars as well. So sticking with Specialized, Anna van der Breggen and Julian Alaphilippe were presented with brand new Specialized bikes with World Championship custom paintwork at Liège Bastogne Age at the weekend, which is pretty cool. I really like this new design. Super clean, like a lot of the frame is white, even down by the drivetrain, so have fun keeping that gloss. clean. Gloss. Yeah, gloss white, so that's cool. But it's good for Specialized, isn't it? They're fortunate enough to have both the women's and the men's world champion riding their bikes. Yeah, that is super cool. That's a pretty good advert yeah. for their bike, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I like that. Um, and yeah, those paint jobs do look quite proper nice. Um, and finally, in Hot Tech this week, we spotted a new spicy helmet. It's, it's from Cask, uh, Italian helmet brand, and it's called the Wasabi. Can you see what we... we I see what you did yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Um, and yeah, the, well, this was spotted being used at the Age Bast on the Age, and uh, Teo Gogenhart was wearing it, and it has a different venting structure, clearly adjustable from from their other helmets. But yes, it's adjustable, which harks back to um, their Infinito helmet. Couple of editions. Was it back. the Infinito? Yeah, so not their not yeah. the previous edition, the edition before that. They yeah, had that it, they design. kind of it was a bit of an inno innovative uh, aero helmet, one of the first aero helmets yep. that, that came out, and yeah, it had uh, that sliding vent on it 
and thing. But this then, has um, a similar system, um, although this is designed for road cyclocross um, time trials if you wanted to. And by adjusting the vent, so if you have it closed down, there's obviously a slight penalty in terms of the cooling of the helmet. I think it's about about a degree or so. You'll be over, you'll be a degree warmer with the helmet vent closed. Whereas if you opened it, you're obviously cooler. But the penalty in terms of the aero penalty is about a watt, maybe yeah. a watt and a half at best at 50 can hour. So it's not much different. Yeah, is it? And, and well, according to Cask, it's a more aerodynamic helmet, uh, the Wasabi, than the Protoni, which was being worn by other Ineos riders. Uh, like Fiatkovsky, I spotted he was in Carapaz wearing the Bretoni. But um, it also, the cool feature of this, well, I, I don't know if it's a cool feature, I haven't not used it, but it, it, it's got merino wool in there, in the oh, padding, okay. yeah. rather than kind of a synthetic thing. Oh, yes. kind of, Interesting, you know, different I've not, approach, I've not, isn't heard, it? not heard of that before yeah. in a helmet. Hmm. Anyway, uh, what do you think? Let us know in the comments, and more hot tech next week. It's now time for Snacks of the Week. Whew, we got some treats in store for today, Ollie. Yeah, um, do. do. you have yours on your side? I do, yeah. Well, I've got mine down here. What have we got? Um, well, in fact, I've actually got a nice little parcel for, for me, and I've also got one for Hank here. We'll just eat Hanks. Um, yeah, we'll eat Hanks. These have been sent in by uh, Mayor B. Let me get into these. Wow, look at these. I've got some cookies. Oh, nice. Alex, tell me about these. What have um, we got? So, well, I know a bit about these. Oh, yeah, I've got the same. Look at these. These are, believe it or not, chocolate cookies, but they're made with avocados. Wow. Like, literally, avoca avocado into a chocolate cookie. As it's, well, it says here, as per Alan Murchison, performance chef, yeah. his, his uh, ride fuel recipe. That's also, that's cool, isn't it? I've got something else in here as well. That looks nice. Like a um, little date bar. Yeah, so ride snacks as well. I think these are brilliant snacks. Uh, definitely. Something that would be really cool, like homemade ride food. I'm a very, big fan of making my own homemade ride food. I'm going to have to do some cycling to eat these. Yeah. Um, very well. well presented in the box. And Fantastic. I will ensure that these find their way to Hank, I presume. Yeah, of course you will. Yeah. <laughs> I might just have them for lunch. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Cha-ching! It's now time to forget cycling uphill, but purchase new components. Or screw riding upgrades by upgrades. Yes, where you submit evidence of the upgrades you've made to your cycling lives and bikes and equipment for the chance to win the ultimate prize, GCN Elite Water Bottle. God, we've actually got one this week. Or bidon, if you're French. Um, but if you remember last week, we had Toby01, or Toby1, um, Rapid Reactor, £25 bargain, up against Carl in San Diego. Um, so we had his incredible recumbent race. It was a close one, this. It was indeed. One of the closest uh, of all time. 52%, Carl in San Diego just wins it by a whisker. That was cool, that recumbent restoration. Yeah, yeah we like actually that. had to get um, the slow-mo camera out on the finish and, and with lasers and stuff. Yeah, the lasers were involved. And the judges and, yeah. Um, Carl in San Diego would get in contact with Facebook and we'll, we'll get your bottle out to you. Well done. Uh, who have we got this week, mate? This week, first up, we have got JWabT19861. That literally rolled off the tongue, that. And this was his lockdown project. Um, he says he built a bike for the missus, his exact words. Um, bought a very tired bike off of Gumtree for £20. Um, bought all new parts, 105 derailleurs, calipers, stripped the paint off, repainted it. And he says he's even put her nickname on the side with a couple of orchid decals. Yeah, he's done some like, looks like some, some stenciling there, of some flowers on the top tube as well. Oh, you yeah. see that? Oh, yeah, I That's see, That's really yeah. cool, doesn't it? So it's an old Viking, one of those old Viking frames. Like some good, good kind detail of like on frame you used to pick up. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is cool. And then on the, the head tube as well. Done a good, good job on the... Um, Colour fade, they're quite hard to paint, I think. Yes. Mm. Um, but he's going to be up against Kit Hayes 121, um, who <laughs> found this, this well, this bike frame and uh, for £25 and changed um, 650 wheels to 700 and found some long reach caliper brakes, swapped out the headset of the stem and fitted flared drop bars. I think we can see where this is going. Yeah. And refurbished uh, some old Shimano Tiagra shifters. Uh, removed the front derailleur, one Ooh. by, got yeah. to one by, classic. And it's a one by nine um, with a 38 narrow wide chain ring. Uh, Shimano Diora uh, rear mech and nine speed cassette. New cables and bar tape as well. So, oh, I look at those old GT, right. Oh yeah, an old GT. My next door neighbor when I was a kid 
he had like a frame just like that. I was gonna say one of my mates had one of these. It was black with um, yellow bits on it. Yeah. And we thought it was so cool. Was We'd both cool, ride it around the park. Oh, coolest yeah. bike ever. Like I wished it was mine. <laughs> yeah. I love the bar ends on it as well. That's so 90s. <laughs> well anyway, it's not down to us. Which upgrade is the best and most worthy of a bottle? You can vote and uh, we'll reveal the winner next week. Time now for our favourite part of the show, the Bike Vault, where you submit pictures of your bikes. We judge them to be nice or super nice. If they're super nice, Alex rings the bell. They get committed to the Bike Vault for eternity. Um, as always, you can play along at home and vote on all the bikes we feature and submit your own bikes using the GCN app. Who have we got first? First up, we have got Tobias Messerschmidt. Great name. Great name with his Trek Madone. Or Madon, 2020. Uh, God, that is an incredible looking machine. Look at those those Hadron uh, Hadron 800s in there. Oh God, that is that's a that's a weapon, isn't it? That um, is um, not quite Biggie Smalls, but Biggie. Why? What are some people call Biggie Parallel, where they're keeping the chain, the top. Of oh, the oh, that's it. Oh, I hadn't thought. Oh. I've seen people. This is something people have been sliding. Viewers have been trying to get this, get this to take Optimum off. Optimum chain line. So yeah, Optimum Chain, obviously, obviously watched um, Man on a Mind video on um, cross chain. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that keeps the chain perfectly parallel from right. the chain ring okay. across the cassette. We'll go with that. It's got to be a super, super nice. nice. Well done. Uh, next up, we've got Brum Benumeric. Benumeric. Mm. Uh, he's in the Florida Everglades with his Scott Addict Gravel. What do you make of that? Well, the chain line is, well, we've gone from good chain line to absolutely very suboptimal. Big ring, big sprocket, not I just would have goes. removed all the gubbins. Lots I mean, of accessories. I know, if you, I know if we questioned him, he would say, I'm in the Everglades, I don't have time to remove my gubbins because... Fun enough, enough alligators. Alligators, yeah. that's it. There are, you know, well, manatees could attack him. Which so, do they have? Crocodiles or alligators? Alligators. Oh. Um, but I've so, been, yeah, the accessories have let this one down slightly, but it is a cool bike. Yeah. I'm gonna go nice though. Yeah, it's a nice. nice. We can't let that many emissions slide through. Sorry about that. So next up is Max Belandin. Bel oh yeah, thanks for helping me out on that. Cannondale Topstone, <laughs> yeah. and he's. Whoa! Check the picture out. Oh wow! I mean that's cool. I mean, I, uh, people are gonna criticise us here, but I, I'm going super nice. Even though he's got the big top tube thing, I just think it works. Ooh, right. Built super up nice. With DT Swiss hubs. Super nice from you. Yeah. Yeah. For that. Next up, we've got DQAWMD. God, they're good. These I, I wasn't names, trying aren't to they? pronounce that. And he's got a Brompton, and an, uh, an M6L Black Edition Brompton. What do you make of that? I mean, the photo's black and is the photo black and white though, or is it just the? It's a very arty-looking photo, <laughs> isn't it? Is that just the bike? Um, saddle slammed. All the way forward. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like Valverde's Brompton. He's got those added little mud flap on, on his mud guard just to make sure no spray getting onto his shoes. Do you know what? I'm, I'm a big fan of Bromptons. I love Bromptons. I think they're fantastic, um, like the a design classic. But the, the thing that's winding me up here is this, the way that the front wheel is just turned slightly. Oh, ever so slightly. Nice. Cool. It's a nice, yeah. Mm. Okay. I don't want to disagree with you. Mm. Yeah, yeah, damn right you do. Yeah, yeah, next up is from <laughs> Viking with yeah. their 1984 Mavic Tour de France limited edition. Yeah, it looks like they're hunting down. Oh, that's well, not, they say that's that not that a 1994 limited edition. They're hunting down Sarah Connor to um, yeah to stop the the birth of John, um, future KOM hunter. Yeah, next to uh, next to a rather nice mural of of the, T, the T101. What do you make of that? Um, what do I make of this bike? Well, he's got the it's the limited edition Mavic wheels in there. You know that funky design. Oh on? yes, they are cool, aren't they? Matching bar tape, well colours to the frame. Yeah, I think the bike's cool. It looks like we've got yeah, big. yeah, and he, they've, they've they've lined up the valves, big and small. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a super nice. Right, super nice yeah. from both of us. Oh. That's unfortunately it for this week's GCN Tech Show, but if you get to the weekend and you find yourself with some free time on your hands, well head over to GCN Plus and check out our two new docs that are out. We've got the jersey presented by Adam Blythe and then also Train Like a Belgium presented by Bernie Eisel. Yeah, uh, Belgium's got the highest number per capita, you know, per population of pro cyclists than any other country on the planet. 
So yeah, we're going to, well, Bernie Eisel investigates why that is the case. Perfect. Um, see you next week. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. See ya.